do that. I didn't hit the play button. There's the record button right there, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I once again tell you, I'm Kevin McClinton, president of TECN TV. Dave Milner, the unpleasant blind guy, with us tonight. Uh, yes, we are not a we're not a democracy. We are a republic, and you're watching us on TECN TV live out of Washington D.C. God bless you, sir. It's a great honor and privilege to have you on the air with us tonight. Well, God bless you, Ken. And hey, uh, you know, let's um, let's get together and monger some notions. And I know that uh, that's a big thing with uh, Nancy Pelosi that um, <laughs> she thinks President Trump's a notion monger. But I do have <laughs> some rather sad news. I'm afraid. Um, okay. Yes, um, Chuck Norris had contact with the Wuhan virus. And now, sadly, the Wuhan virus has to be quarantined for the next 14 days. There you go. <laughs> the Wuhan virus didn't have a chance. Didn't have a chance, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Dave Milner, thank you so much for being with us tonight. I, I got to ask you, you've listened to my passion over the past few moments of the program. Uh, many people will take it as first Ken uh, hates Tucker Carlson, and that's not the truth. I just think he's prejudiced and biased on his reporting uh, out of New York. Uh, and then there are those who would say that I didn't take COVID-19 very seriously. I should have been fearful like everyone else. I, I got to ask you today, sir, uh, uh, where am I in this? Uh, what are your thoughts towards what I'm saying tonight? Well, Ken, as um, there are a lot of commentators that are beginning to line up with you on this, um, and uh, they include some uh, some some heavy hitters, and some others are starting to come around because it, it's like I've been saying all along myself: the body count simply does not line up with what has been put out there as far as as uh, the, uh, the the quote unquote cure. The body count doesn't match up. I'm going to give you two figures, okay? Um, one from uh, February the 2nd. This comes from CNBC. There were 10,000 deaths by February the 2nd in the United States from regular old influenza. All right, next one comes from March the 6th from Breitbart. 20,000 deaths from uh, just regular influenza. And we have today, I believe, last figure is more or less 1,100 uh, you know, deaths from the Wuhan virus. And of course, each death is obviously a tragedy. I'm not downplaying the deaths. But what I, what I said to Jeff Mitchell, the host of the English Defense League radio show today, and he sends his best regards, by the way. God bless is, him. Yeah, that, well, I, I, will say, I will tell him that. And I said that we didn't even shut this country down when this, we had the Spanish flu. And we had far fewer medical resources and far less infrastructure to deal with it. We didn't shut the country down a uh, hundred years ago. No, we did not. And there was, in my opinion, there was no reason to shut the country down this time. I am increasingly in disagreement with this whole flatten the curve stuff. Okay. And I know there are a lot of people that are, are, are afraid. Of, part of the reason they're afraid, Ken, is because the news won't shut up about this. Mm -hmm. it, when uh, it does, Even if you look at Fox News, which I still consider to be just, just the, the fake stream media like the rest of them, they don't shut up about it. They, almost every story is about this. All right, And, of course, it's got people worried about it and everything. But I have to say that while I will call out President Trump, when I don't agree with him on something. Um, I, I do have his back when he says he is hopeful that we can have this, uh, that we can begin to open up the country again by Easter Sunday. He is hopeful. He didn't say, yeah, that's going to happen. We're going to we'll turn the economy back on like a light. No, he did not say that. Mm -hmm. And you still have reporters out there, Ken, lying on him and saying that's what he said. No, he did not say that. Exactly. Nope. And you gave me a story. I'm going to jump a little bit on you here, Ken. Yeah. Well, because you gave me a story here uh, that from uh, the Hill, I think it is, that says that uh, you know, Trump is such a clash with governors over reopening the the uh, the economy, basically. Yeah. And now my viewpoint about that is is basically that as 
I see it, President Trump should turn a lot of this over to the states for them to decide when they want to open things up, okay, and how they want to open things up. Make it a slow process if they want to do that, and let the chips fall where they may in November. If you have governors like the governor of California or the governor of New York, um, who is very likely going to be the next Democrat nominee because we're seeing his stupid press conferences every day now, <laughs> like, like like there aren't 49 other states. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> um, when we're seeing these guys put together some of these draconian things, some of the things going on in New Jersey, um, first, uh, the, uh, you know, the wonderful curfew, which does nothing to fight the virus, and then uh, the, the, the shutting down of gun stores, uh, basically governors and mayors and, and some sheriffs running around acting like little junior model Hitlers, let the chips fall where they may in November when it comes to elections. But, uh, I mean, I don't know about you, Ken, yeah. but I'm in complete agreement. Uh, I hope we can open this up by, uh, by Easter Sunday because, uh, Ken, I'm over 60. Yeah. Okay. And I, uh, I refuse to be used by the left as a stick to beat this country down until it is a blasted ruin that looks like Venezuela where ev nobody knows where the next meal is coming from because they're all because we ate all the zoo animals. Did anybody ever hear this guy? He was once president of the United States. He, his name was uh, Abraham Lincoln. And he said that there was no doggone way that America could ever be conquested from without. That our conquest would come from within. And literally, we have watched uh, literally paranoid tyrants with local emergency powers destroy the lives of millions, millions of citizens over the fear that we could be annihilated by an invisible virus. And I have been criticized for saying this uh, by my intern and others, but it is the truth. Nature will flatten the curve automatically here in the States. Nature clearly says that by next week, our temperatures in the middle part of the Atlantic will be in the middle 70s. For those who are in the south, the deep south, you know that your temperature is going to be 80, 85 degrees pretty soon. Viruses die in the heat. They die. So we're not going to have a flu an extended flu season as Cuomo is trying to project upon the rest of America. We're not, it's not going to happen that way. In the places that you should be concerned about, South America... Africa, India. Why? Because those nations are getting ready to go into their winter seasons, ladies and gentlemen, into their winter seasons. Their flu seasons are about to start. And unfortunately, I gave the story of my parents who are, have been cowering in fear in their home over the past three to four weeks. And they're not the only elderly couple, but literally, Dave, you're in your 60s, I'm in my mid-50s. People have been saying that this is a virus that's targeted to kill elderly people. And elderly people need to stay home. And there have been some who have even made the notion that if you get sick and you're over 60, don't do anything. Pull the plug. Let them die. I want to get your opinions regarding that. Well, Ken, for that, you only have to go back a little bit and look at some of the leftist ways of dealing with older people from other countries. I mean, look at the Netherlands. They've got a, a euthanasia policy now in place. I mean, there was a famous story uh, months back ago where a family held uh, their, uh, you know, this, this grandmother down while they euthanized her. She didn't want to die, but it was decided that yeah, it was her time to go. I mean, when you begin putting these notions forward, and this is this is not new. I mean, we're talking about uh, basically um, for two reasons. This, it, it, this advantage is the left in two ways. Number one, it gets it, it gets rid of the excess population, uh, Mr. Scrooge Democrat, 
And number two, it gets rid of people who remember the most and the best what it was like to live in free societies. Yes. And you saw this you saw this after the Brexit vote in the UK. There were younger people in the UK uh, complaining that Brexit what won because of old people. You know, oh, old people voted for Brexit, which um, which statistically uh, that was true. Yeah. The older people did vote for Brexit. Uh, and the younger people were complaining about that, saying, well, we should have two and a half votes to their one and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, would, uh, would the left get rid of old people if it would advance their agenda, their, their rank and file? I don't believe so, because I still believe that their rank and file are good people uh, who are just being misled. Would their leaders do it? In a second. Heartbeat. They wouldn't care. Heartbeat. And one, one of the other stories out of New York that they're not talking about, Tucker Carlson, I didn't hear it tonight, but the Attorney General for New York is calling on states, not just New York, but all of the 50 states in the District of Columbia to keep the Planned Parent Clinics open so that they can continue to provide the elective surgery for reproductive health called abortion. Now, the same people that tell me that they're concerned about my parents being locked up in a room for 30 days, unafraid to go outside because they don't want them to get the coronavirus. The same people, and I heard um, Andrew Cuomo talk today about the sanctity of life, caring for the elderly, amazingly, the same guy who almost signed an infanticide bill, if he didn't, uh, I believe he did. But the bottom line was, we're okay with killing babies, but we got to lock everybody up, even healthy people, to keep them from dying. What's this all about? Well, Ken, I, I will tell you that that's going to be addressed in my seventh anniversary show, when you come out um, on the 11th, okay? And um, I know Mary's already heard it. And um, the uh, oddly enough, and I would love to see this, I would love to see the country open up by April the 13th, because that would be my actual seventh anniversary. But that's just sidebar. The, um, okay, I said this in, in the show, and look, if you're a parole board, if someone is a parole board, if they have no problem with a baby being burned alive in its mother's womb or um, just being picked apart, uh, basically, uh, you know, as, as if... Um, as, as if they were on some kind of medieval torture machine and then killed and pulled out of their mother's womb. If they're good with that, and especially if they're good with that baby's neck being snapped after it's been born, because it just happens to be an inconvenience to its mother, then don't come back and talk to me or anybody else about how you worry about the sanctity of life. That's a joke in that instance. And what I said then, and I'll preview it now, is if any one of these pro aborts, any one of these people who is fighting for abortion, okay, um, is is out there on the news telling you this stuff, change the channel, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, well, look, you know, look at look at um, you know, Turner Classic Movies or um, or you know uh, SpongeBob. Look, look at the <laughs> Christmas movies on Hallmark Channel, okay? In oh no, Dave, Dave, <laughs> <laughs> we have got to do a Hallmark movie, man. We have got to do one. I am so sick of these women with their Hallmark movies. It always starts the same way. It goes on kind of different ways, and then it ends the same way. We need something for guys to watch, you know, with some extra firepower in it. You know what I'm saying? Well, you know what, man, I, I told you, man, my favorite one so far is Kung Fu Christmas. As Kung it, Fu Christmas? Yeah, as it gets closer to Christmas, we'll uh, we'll flesh that out a little bit for everybody. But, <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, Kung Fu Christmas, uh, you know, I've got one, um, um, you know, um, a, uh, you know, Run Silent, Run Deep Christmas, you know, with submarine fights and everything. I mean, we can do this, man. We, 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 we're Americans. We can do anything. But we have to open this country back up again, man. Uh, I, and, I mean, look at I know people are afraid, but uh, I, I want to say the Governor Dan Patrick got a raw deal, I think, even from some conservatives, uh, from some conservative commentators who mis, uh, misread what he said, honestly, yeah. I think, um, yeah. because 
the people came out immediately and said, oh, he wants Logan's run, right? You know, yeah. he wants tomorrow to be last day, and he wants all the old people to die off of it. No, he didn't. What he said was that he wants the, com- the country to open back up again. And if by some slim chance, and I say this myself, he happens to catch this virus, he does. Okay, we will, we will deal with it because both he and, and, and I would rather have uh, the America that we remember, okay, where people can be free than to uh, be some communist manure hole. Yeah. And That's, and right yeah. now, uh, th- we're being treated as if we're one of those, and forgive my French for all my Christian viewers, forgive my French, but this is a direct quote. We're being treated like a shithole nation. Uh, yes, we are. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm laughing because I see what what uh, your executive producer has put in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> Bonnie, I don't think he's going to be watching that one. It's something I don't think he's going to be watching. <laughs> but, I, but no. no uh, I will not be watching Brokeback Mountain anytime uh, soon. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, girlfriend. <laughs> There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, well, maybe get maybe get to Western Channel. I will say this, Ken. I do. Um, my God, man, the American companies that are stand are stepping up. I mean, you hear about industry doing this every day, private industry, and this is why the left is going. Well, you know, Trump should just make these companies do things. He doesn't have to make them. They're yeah. doing it themselves. Anheuser Busch um, is is now going to start making hand sanitizer. Okay, uh, I mean, just numerous examples of this across the United States and across the free world, too. I mean, exactly. in the U.K., you've got a vacuum cleaner company that's making ventilators. Rolls-Royce, brother, is making ventilators. Exactly. Right? I mean, now, private now, industry is stepping up. I want to compare, because I think you're right, I want to compare what the state governors have done in comparison to Donald Trump when it comes to free markets. Now, he did say close the borders, which is the right thing to do, and if you're stuck out of the country, it sucks to be you. Uh, enjoy your time away. Uh, it's going to be very difficult to get you home unless, you know, Southwest Airlines and JetBlue and the rest of them volunteer to bring you home. Uh, I think that would be very sweet, but, you know. That'd be cool. So, yeah, it sucks to be you otherwise. But Donald Trump went and asked the private companies, even though he used the Defense Act, he prepared it, um, Pro- Defense Production Act. He didn't use the Defense Production Act to ask free market companies to do what was necessary for the nation. He asked them to volunteer through Vice President Pence, and they volunteered and they did it. These state governors, little tyrants that they are, mandibles of governance, chose to shut businesses down. And now they're concerned that they're not going to have enough tax revenue to carry out the fiscal year? Where'd you think you were getting it from, you idiot? Did you think you were printing it? It's just absolutely asinine in terms of thought. Go right here, sir. I I think some of them actually did think that, man. I I, I really do. I think some of them did think that, um, that money could just be printed. I think some of them did have the Rashida Tlaib uh, attitude towards this. I don't. I don't know if you heard her plan, but she wants to. Um, she wants to create the treasury to create uh, two coins, each worth a trillion dollars, and then redistribute that wealth. Okay. But <laughs> only, only one problem with that: each of those coins would weigh well over, uh, well over two hundred, uh, two hundred thousand tons. I'm not sure there's enough platinum on the entire planet <laughs> to make even one of those coins. I mean, oh my God, man! Yeah, um, I got. I got to ask you this real quick because we gotta go. Uh, but I, I got, and I thank God for you coming on every Thursday night. And we do have this on YouTube so that people can watch and view our conversations, listen to our conversations. Beautiful. Um, and that's with all of the great help of Bonnie Williams, my executive producer there. Uh, and also Mary Brockman, my bouncer in chief in the chat room, who I adore and love, and I'm paying attention to tonight, so I don't get fined. Love you, both. love you, <laughs> and Mrs. Biggs watching as well. So I, I, I got to ask you this question: The Department of Justice, I think, has finally done something right, but you'll tell me. Uh, they are indicting 
the leader of Venezuela, Maduro, on drug trafficking and human trafficking charges. I want to get your thoughts on that. Oh, well, I mean, look, at okay, it, you know how this is. If, if you have any street experience, you know what they say. The DA would not come after you unless they thought they had a case. There you go. So I, I think that's what it is about this one. I think the Justice Department believes they have a strong case against Maduro. Um, and, and, hey, you know, I hope they get him. Uh, you know, I mean, I hope it's like a Manny, or Manny Noriega thing, only only they keep him. And, mm -hmm. uh, it, you know, that's that's it. And, uh, Ken, I got to say, man, uh, thank you for this opportunity. I know uh, I have one last question though, yes. for you real quick. Go right ahead. Now, I don't know if you showed this to Mrs. Biggs, but mm -hmm. um, last Friday, the U.K. canceled uh, canceled their schools for the for, well, for the foreseeable future for the year. But they didn't just send all the kids home. Okay, they canceled school for all the kids except for the kids of vital workers. In other words, uh, the children of police officers, uh, NHS mm -hmm. workers, food delivery people, and people like that. Does that make, and I asked you if uh, to ask her if that made any sense. Does that make any sense to you, given that if those kids happen in their school to catch the Wuhan virus, they're going to take it home to the most <laughs> necessary workers there are in the UK right now. Does, does this make any sense, or is this just government stupidity at its absolute finest? Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I would have loved for them to have kept the schools open, just my personal opinion, because the children were are least likely to be harmed by the Wuhan virus. And I know the teachers say, well, we could be harmed. Well, yeah, and, and you know, congratulations. You've taken off for a good, what, six months to come uh, as a result thereof. But here's the problem. Number one, the public schools have proven, even after 9-11, that they do not have an emergency infrastructure plan. Number one. Number two, the state leaders have gone overboard with closing schools into a new year meaning that your children are left uneducated. Unless you're going to do something, and you're going to provide some free training along the way. You're going to teach your kids something. That's great. That's wonderful. But beyond that, who's teaching your kids? Here's the third problem with this scenario. You have just proven to all the world that you really don't need the public school system. In fact, yeah. you are probably better off Finding someone who can either tutor your kid at home, send them to a private school, uh, or do the free online training. Stay home with your kids so that they learn what discipline is all about. You can socialize at church, but you can actually train your children. They get a better education, higher scores, higher test scores uh, if they were just trained freely online. Here's the fourth and last thing I want to say regarding the, the schools being closed down. You didn't have an infrastructure plan. And you always tell me, the leftists always tell me, that education is there for the poor kids, those who are defenseless and need the education most, poor and minorities. I want to ask you something. Who got hurt the most? Because uh, I don't see y'all giving iPads or laptops to kids and making certain that they have the tools necessary for them to be educated. And I'm talking about across the board. So literally what you said is that the risk of putting the fear of God, forgive me, the fear of Gov into the hearts and souls of the American people was more important than the education of the poor minority kids. That, my friend, hey, is what everybody should run on in 2020. I'll tell you this, Ken, also, um, just as an aside, man, this is going to change how many parents decide that their kids can do just fine uh, taking classes from home. Australia did ra has done radio school for generations and been very successful at it, and that was before the invention of the Internet. Uh, public schools are going to have a lot of very interesting questions to answer after this. 
and again, I want to thank you, man. I, I really appreciate the I love you, man. To come on with you, man. I love, love you, brother. Dave Milner, ladies and God gentlemen. Bless you, God bless you. Dave Milner, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, you can find him on SHR Media. You can find him on uh, Blog Talk Radio, uh, on English Defense League, uh, and as well, uh, his own program, The Unpleasant Blind Guy, that you will find on SHR Media. Uh, thank you all so much.